Hello, it's Duncan. In our quest for a clean architecture and faster build, we've been splitting our Gradle project into sub-projects. Last time we skimmed off the top layer, moving our acceptance tests into their own space. This time we'll drain a project out of the bottom, moving our lowest level code into a foundation library. On the way we'll find unused code, test in the wrong place, and see how splitting code can lead to better cohesion. I was starting to feel quite good about the architecture till I started. Now we have a moral problem. Let's start with a quick review of our current build. We'll start with settings.gradle, and that shows that we have three sub-projects. There's app, test app, and experiments. Experiments is our non-production code, places I've been trying things out, but things that I don't want to lose. The other two projects are app and test app, and a little while ago we pulled the browser tests out into this test app. That allows us to run them separately. And the other bold thing we've got here is this build source, and that contains our conventions plugin that has the things in common between our three builds, the app, experiments, and test app. Within our app, we have lots of packages. We have something in the root here, which is our main, and then under com gilded rows, we have config, domain, foundation, HTTP, persistence, pricing, rendering, testing, and updating. And we had a way of producing a diagram, which shows the relationship between those packages. And what we saw was that these arrows are all pointing down. So lots of things depend on foundation, but it doesn't depend on anything else. The same is true of domain, persistence sits in the middle, and so on. And my plan for today is to move some of these packages down into their own sub-projects. Why? Well, if we get it right, then our build can speed up, because if we make changes to our app logic, the stuff up here, we won't need to be recompiling the bits down the bottom or running the tests. It will enforce layering, because code in different sub-projects can't depend on each other. There can't be circular dependencies. It would potentially allow us to reuse this code, in particular things like foundation. And finally, the later you do it, the harder it becomes. So if you're going to split into sub-projects, don't do it right at the beginning, because you won't know what they are, but don't leave it till the end, because you'll never be able to do it. I'm going to start with this foundation package down the bottom here. Over the years I found that foundation is a good package to put things that we wish had been included in the standard library. So low-level code and types that we could imagine using not just in this project, but in other projects and in other domain areas. I'm just going to regenerate this package diagram, and I'm going to include external dependencies. So we will rerun that. Here it is now. And if I zoom into foundation, you'll see that it currently depends on Jackson and Kotlin X coroutines and HTTP4K filter. Now, Jackson, we might consider ubiquitous. I think Kotlin X coroutines is certainly really just part of our standard library. But HTTP4K filter, that's a bit suspicious to me. It doesn't feel like things in our foundation should depend on filter. So let's go and have a look and see why that is. Here's our foundation package. And you can see that it's got one, two, six files inside it. And let's go through them one by one. Let's have a look at analytics and see what it imports. OK, so there's Jackson. But also, all http for k filter. And that seems to be because we're using Zipkin tracing storage. So I think what's happened here is we've mixed two different levels of code. We've got this analytics, which is a very generally applicable thing. I take an analytics event and I log it somewhere. And for that, we need this analytics event. But this logging analytics is a very specific implementation of it, and in turn uses a very specific little bit of HTTP4K. The analytics and analytics event we can imagine using in lots of projects, but this particular logging analytics will only apply to a project that uses HTTP4K and drags its jar file into our foundation. So I propose to split this file. Looking at the place we could put it, well, I wonder whether we could just put it in common gilded rows for this app. So I'm going to take this thing. I'm going to copy it into the top level project. We'll keep calling analytics and add that. And then this one at the top level, that's not going to be the one that defines that analytics event or type alias. So we can get rid of that. It now needs to import the one in foundation. That's cool. And that one. And now the one in foundation, we can get rid of this idea of logging analytics from here. So we don't need any of that. And this turns out to be unused. And now's a good time to tidy that sort of thing up. And now if we go back to this implementation here and see where this is called from, well, the answer is it's called from the app, which is just an Exotus Analytics file. So that seems like a good place. There's an issue here that we can fix by deleting that. So let's just check that that runs all the tests. Ah, OK. So now we have some analytics tests. Where are they? Ah, here they are. They're in tests of foundation. 
but we've moved the code that it's testing, this logging and analytics up. So I think we just moved this test up as well. To there, and make sure it still builds by running the tests. Excellent. And because when we're refactoring like this, it's very easy to break something, I think I'm going to commit these as individual commits every time we get a little bit further along the road. So we just check what we've done. We've split analytics out from the foundation type. Let's see what AI Assistant thinks we did. Oh, I should undo the packages. Refactor analytics to improve modularity. Well, that's certainly true. But I think a better expression would be split analytics into foundation and implementation. Let's commit that. And now I'm going to regenerate the package diagram to see that Common Guild Rose Foundation only now depends on Kotlin X coroutines. So we removed both Jackson and HTTPK. Good. What's left in Foundation? Well, we've seen analytics, contexts. We've got this magic that we're using to make some context receivers work. That seems generally applicable, although with a sell-by date. But again, now's a good time to get rid of things that are not being used. Parallel mapping. Okay, we have this parallel map coroutines. That looks like a thing that we might want it to be built into the standard library, so we'll keep that. Retrying. Again, the same sort of thing. Uncaught exception event. Well, this is where thunking between exceptions and analytics, because it's an analytics event. I suppose, actually, we might as well take that, cut it out of there, and put it into analytics, because that is a generally applicable thing. So we can do that and delete that. And then finally, we have wrapping. This is some functional programming things to take one function and wrap it with another function to produce a third function. We're only using one of those, but I think it's probably worth keeping the other two so that I don't have to work out what they look like. Okay, we'll just check the tests. They are in here. We've got response errors tests. I don't recognize that at all from our foundation package. Let's see where this is. Oh, it's in com gilded rose HTTP. It looks like we put that in the wrong place at some point or didn't move it into the right place, but we can fix that now. Oh, I wish when I dragged a file, it would default to everything in that file. It's really annoying, catches me every time. Right, so that's now moved into HTTP. That leaves us retrying tests. Here they are, and those are tests of our retrying, which is in there. So that seems good to me. We'll run the tests. And life is still sweet. So I think that's another commit. And this time it is tidy foundation package. Commit that. Okay, then. so now we have a foundation package with essentially no dependencies. We should be able to move it out into its own sub project. So in order to do that, we need to create a sub project. That's a new directory. And we'll call it foundation. And now we need to mention that in our settings.gradle, which is here. And basically, before we build the app, although Gradle will work it out for us, we need to build foundation. And if we wait for a moment, that will turn bold to show us that it is a module. And now let's copy this into here so we get some sort of build. Add it. And we'll say, what do we need to build in our foundation? Well, we need our Kotlin's convention plugin to bring in the compiler. We're not going to depend on other projects or on HTTPK, but we do know that we depend on coroutines. So I think this is just an implementation dependency because we're not going to export any types from it. It's just used to implement our parallel map. Okay, we'll have a new directory for source main Kotlin and source test Kotlin. Bring those into existence. And now we should be able to take our foundation package from here and say move the package to a source root of foundation main foundation and now we're going to do the same thing with the test move to a source root of foundation test in there which for some reason needs thinking about it turns out and is just sat there I don't know cancel did it work well retrying test seems to be left behind let's just 
cut that out of there and put it into foundation test. Well, those have arrived. We'll say paste that into there. OK, so it looks like this test is depending on something in priced stock list loader tests. Hmm. I think we'll cancel that for now. And let's go and sort it out before we try and move it. So we'll undo the moving directories. No, not that, but retrying tests should still be here. But now it can't see wrapped with because we've moved that. It's not a problem maybe if we go and update so that our build depends on an implementation of project foundation. And again, I've just set this to implementation for now. That's the least scope. We can always broaden it to API later if we need to. Right then, back to retrying tests. And the issue we had was some import from some other place, which I'm not seeing at the moment. Ah, yes, I remember now. It was that succeed after, and in fact, this one here, is used by the price stock list loader tests. So within one Gradle project, that was fine. But if we're going to move the retrying tests and this function out into the tests of our foundation, then it won't be available in our app. So now we have a moral problem. The truly right thing to do is to take this one function and put it into a test fixtures of our foundation project. That way it will be available for the retrying tests and for the price stock list loader tests. That's an awful lot of work for one function. We could just copy the implementation into the price stock list loader tests. That's quite attractive. It's not the sort of duplication that's going to do us any harm. Or, and I'm erring in this direction, we could say that this is production code in foundation. Let's do that and see how bad we feel about it. So I'm going to cut it out of here. I'm going to say that now would live in our foundation retrying. So we've got two retries and we've got to succeed after. I could lay that out a bit better. Does that still build? It does, except that we found another build problem, which is that fixture requires foundation magic. Now, where is fixture? It's in our test fixtures. I guess there was a clue there of our app project. So let's look at the build here. And I suppose because we said this was an implementation dependency on the project foundation, the test fixtures can't see it. So we now have another moral problem. Do we make this an API dependency? That's publishing it to anything that depends on app. Or do we add a dependency down here with the test fixtures implementation? Hmm. Well, I think probably the least worst is make this API especially as this app is the top of our dependency tree if you discount the acceptance tests. Okay, well, you may have seen a little build there. Let's just try the tests. All good, except that I haven't got my little test runner plugin running. There we go. And now, what was it we were trying to do? Something about the tests of foundation are the retrying tests. There we are. We we're trying to take this and say, move that to the source root of foundation. And this time it's happy. Good. Time for a commit. And if I've got the energy, I do like to review these to make sure they look sensible every time. So what have we just done? We've moved all of foundation and its tests into the foundation project. And we've updated the build of our app to reference that project. And of course, our settings.gradle now needs to tell Gradle that there is a project in that directory. So this is extract foundation package into its own Gradle sub module. <sighs> if we rerun our package analyzer, remember this is only failing because it has an approvals test. We can see the dependencies on com gilded rose foundation down here, but now because we're only analyzing the source of the app project, we won't actually be able to see what this depends on. That's less of a problem, though, because we can now just ask the foundations build and see that all that we depend on is coroutines and whatever lives in this conventions plugin. Before we finish, we should just check that we can do a clean build. Lots of nice busy cores here. That's good. And over and done within 11 seconds. So a bit quicker than before we started our build refactor. Well, this has been a bit tedious, and I'm tired. I know that computers are supposed to save us from tedium, but I must say that I've tried this refactoring with Juni several times, and it has either died before it's finished the job, or failed to recognize the changes that it could make to make the whole thing plausible, things like splitting out the analytics and moving the test into the right package. And so as a result, 
we ended up with a much more complicated code base, or in lots of cases, something that just didn't compile. Now that this foundation is in its own sub-project, next episode, I think we're going to look at splitting the rest of the app down the middle, so that configuration, main, and rendering, and probably HTTP will stay in app, but our pricing, updating, and the domain will move down into their own separate project. We will have to decide what to do with persistence. Is that a concern of our top-level project or our lower-level project? If you'd like to see how that turns out, then please subscribe to the channel. Like this video in order to encourage me to make more content. It's not too late to buy tickets to Kotlin Conf and see Dimitri and I attempt 47 refactorings in 45 minutes. And if you can't make it to Kotlin Conf, or even if you can, my friends in Belgium are organizing their very own Kotlin conference, KT Conf, and I'm delighted to announce that I'll be speaking there as well. That's in September. I think this is northeast of Brussels, so pretty much in the heart of Europe, a great place for a conference. Thanks for watching.